All right, so finally I'm able to make this video. And in this video, what I'm gonna do is go over my hormonal profile that I just received the results for uh, the other day. This test was conducted on uh, March 23rd. And the results are quite interesting and not at all really what I expected them to be. So what I'm gonna do is kind of show you this real quick so you can see that uh, what, we're, what we're working with here. And then I'll post a link to a scanned image of this below so you can see it if you want. But what I'm going to do is just go ahead and read over the results real quick. And before I get started, I just want to apologize if the lighting or angles in this video is weird. I'm doing it in a poorly lit environment on my iPad, so I'm doing the best that I can. Uh, Alright, so the first hormone on here is DHEA. And my level was 24, and the... Uh, average range is 3 to 10 nanograms per milliliter. So I was about over double, uh, almost two and a half times the quote normal range. Uh, my progesterone was normal. My androstenedione was 441. The normal range is 151 to 350. So that was high. My estrone is uh, 29 and the normal range was 30 to 58 uh, so that was a little bit low my testosterone is 382 which is like almost four times or more I haven't done the exact math the the normal range the normal range for someone my age is 60 to 110 and I'm coming in at 382 to be exact so it's quite a bit of a difference there <laughs> so uh, the next hormone is DHT, or dihydrotestosterone, and I'm at 87. It's high as well. Normal range for someone uh, 30 to 39 is 22 to 72. Big range, I'm at 87. Lastly, estradiol is at 6, or est estradiol, however you pronounce it, whatever. Uh, I'm at 6, and 20 to 49 years old is 1 to 3, so I'm high on that as well, which makes sense since the testosterone is so high. So these results were not really at all what I was expecting. Um, so I'm a bit kind of shocked a little bit to to be honest and um, so I'm just taking a step back and kind of re-examining what I've been doing because obviously what I've been doing has been working because it's been my goal to boost my testosterone because over the last you know 20, not 20 years, but over the last period of my life, the ages of 20 to, let's say even 24, 25, I was not really a person that had a lot of testosterone, but when I was a teenager, I definitely did because I was really active, I was a, a, I was a good athlete, I could recover really fast, um, I had a pretty uh, abundant sex drive, I could put on muscle really easily if I chose to, which in high school, I actually did do that. I lifted weights uh, two or three times a week for about six months to a year. I don't remember exactly the dates. And I ended up putting on about 40 pounds of muscle. I weighed about 130, 140 at the time, which is about what I weigh now. And then I ended up getting about to 180 in a very short amount of time without even really trying, without even really knowing what I was doing. It's just, I would just go to the gym and do the machines, whatever I felt like doing, and I just bulked up really fast. And people were like, dude, are you taking steroids? Because you, you just bulked up so fast, it can't really be possible, but that's what happened. Uh, honestly, I thought it was healthy. I felt like crap. I felt really weighed down and really depressed, probably because I wasn't eating very well at the time. Um, but just all that extra weight on my frame was not at all desirable. So... From there, I ended up losing that weight again in about a year or so. Again, without really trying too hard, just changing my diet, changing my exercise, changing my mind, most importantly, and the weight kind of came off. I went back to normal size, but hormones were kind of out of whack at that point, which then sent me on the journey that I'm on now, which is optimizing hormones for overall health and vitality. So basically what I'm going to do since my testosterone is really really high and my hormones are really boosted is for number one do more research on hormones to see if there are any risks for having uh, levels this high if so what are they and how can I mitigate them um, and then I'm going to identify secondarily the results and the actions that I've been doing to create these results 
so that then I can help other people do the same thing because low testosterone is pretty ubiquitous throughout our culture and throughout probably even the world at this point. And testosterone levels, sperm count levels, male fertility levels have been dropping at a pretty alarming rate um, consistently over the last 50 years. And if you do any kind of research on that, you'll probably be kind of shocked and taken aback. So that's why at, at first I was a little concerned about these levels, but at the same time, I don't know if I'm that concerned because what is, what is their scale for, for normal? Is it the male of today who has like half the testosterone of males 50 years ago? Or is it the males of 50 years ago who had twice the testosterone that males do now? Is that the scale they're using? Which one is it? So those are questions that I have. So what I'm going to do now is get, um, this was a saliva test, so now what I'm going to do is get a blood panel to determine whether this was incredibly accurate, if so, if there are any differences, and just have another frame of reference for what I'm doing. So again, long story short, basically what I'm going to do is go back and look over my lifestyle, uh, diet, exercise, supplements, herbs, uh, mental things, exercises, all of that, put it together into a package that other men can use to get the results that I have, which are speak for themselves, basically, and I did it without even really trying or working that hard to do it, without even really doing that many supplements and that many herbs. Um, it's just mostly diet and exercise things and eliminating uh, certain factors from my lifestyle, from my environment that are a little you know, detrimental to hormone optimization. So again, this is something I've been talking about for a while, uh, getting this test done. I highly, highly recommend testing. It's something I'm going to be doing more and talking about more because it's incredibly important. And this gives me a clear indication, a clear picture as to what I should do, what I shouldn't do, how I should change my program. And I think testing is essential and crucial for this reason, to keep us from really just fumbling around in the dark and maybe trying this, trying that without really any kind of the guidance or direction. So again, I'm going to post a link to where you can see the actual image um, because I know me just holding this up is probably not that clear. Um, and me going over it, you know, I went through it kind of fast. So if you want to look at it, there's a link below. Um, interested to hear your thoughts. If you have any questions or comments, post them below and I'll talk to you soon.